Hello, everyone. We will begin the presentation in approximately one minute. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation, the transition from Casemaker to FastCase. Before we begin, we have a couple of quick housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, you might have noticed that you're currently in listen-only mode. This is to cut down on the amount of background noise so everyone can hear us. However, questions are welcome at any point during today's presentation. On your screen, you should still have the pop-up from GoToWebinar. If you click on that pop-up, there's a button labeled questions, and you can ask questions at any point during today's presentation, and we'll work them in. Also, we'll pause for a question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. Second announcement, today's session is not for CLE credit. However, FastCase does offer CLE credited web webinars. To sign up for them, please go to fastcase.com forward slash webinars. All right, welcome everybody. My name is Erin Page, and I'm the Senior Law Librarian on staff with FastCase Legal Research. And joining me is my wonderful colleague, Sam. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, and I might have a familiar voice for you. I have been doing Casemakers presentation webinars for the past uh, almost 12 years. <laughs> um, so we've maybe run into each other in a webinar before. I'm one of our senior trainers here at the Fast Case and Case Maker Merge, and I am really happy to be here. Excellent. It's a pleasure to be presenting with you. All right. So do we want to go ahead and get started? Sounds great. So everybody should be able to see my screen at this time, and it should be a large black screen with some options on it. Um, you can see it says paving the way for legal tech. And here we provide you with a couple of options. This is the splash page. It's what you're going to see when you log in through the Bar Association now and try to access Casemaker. It gives you the opportunity to start using FastCase or continue with Casemaker. Today's presentation is going to be focusing on moving into using FastCase. You can see you can click that Start Using FastCase button here. The first button, it's white with the background. And you can also click on the About FastCase link. There's some information about the merger. And then of course, fast case resources and more options for webinars. Let's go ahead and click right into fast case. Fantastic. So the screen that you're seeing now, this is the fast case homepage. And this is the screen that you'll see when you go from that splash page or later when we are completely done with the transition, you'll be going to this page automatically. This is where you can start your research process and there are a ton of tools on the screen that are available for your use. I just wanna point out a couple of quick navigation points so that you know what we're talking about when we mention them later. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see two options. The first one you'll see automatically is the FastCase blog. And this is where we post announcements about what's going on with FastCase new content, new features, new tips, new tricks, new webinars, all of that information will end up in the FastCase blog. So if it's been a while since you've used our system or if you're brand new to our system, I recommend taking a quick peek down there to see what's new. The second button on the screen is labeled Docket Alarm. Docket Alarm is FastCase's sister product and is designed to interface with dockets to pull the rest of the information about the case the pleadings, the motions, the exhibits, the orders, all of that kind of fun content. 
This is not included automatically in your FAST case access, but it's something that you can add on if you'd like to. So if you need that kind of content from time to time, this is a great resource for you to explore. And during today's presentation, we'll mention a couple of places where you can see the docket alarm content. Up here in the top right corner of the page, you'll see a couple of icons here as well. These icons are visible no matter where you are in the FastCase system. So if you're on the results page or if you're on the document page, you'll still have access to these great tools up here on the right. The tool I especially want to point out now is this one that's shaped like a question mark in a circle. This is the help and support menu. And from here, you can access a ton of resources about FastCase to familiarize yourself with the system and answer questions that you might have. I especially want to point out our user guide, which has step-by-step -step instructions for using our system with pictures. We also have tutorial videos. These are short, five minute or less videos focusing on specific functions in FastCase. So for example, if after today you can't remember how to print, there's a video on that. We already mentioned our webinars, but this is a direct link so that you can sign up for them anytime you'd like. We also offer hotkeys. Hotkeys are computer keyboard shortcuts that allow you to navigate the FastCase system without having to use your mouse. So if you simply prefer to use your keyboard, or if you're using an adaptive device such as a screen reader, these uh, shortcuts would be great for use in that system. Last thing I want to mention introduces our next segment, and that is the Boolean tips here at the top of the screen. Sam? All right, so the Boolean tips. In Casemaker, when you were doing your research, you may have noticed that there was a blue search tips link located near the search bar. Boolean tips are the search operators that function in FastCase. And what you'll notice is that all of these are pretty similar to what you're used to using in Casemaker. This uh, syntax functions or Boolean search options or operators that you can use in FastCase are the same systems and operators that you've been using with Casemaker. You have the opportunity to do AND searching or not. You can create brackets and or use parentheses to sort of segment your search into the pieces that are necessary. Phrase searching with quotation marks. The within phrase, or excuse me, within a certain key number of keywords searching, that proximity search is also available. And then some things that FastCase adds to this search algorithm that's going to be a great benefit for you include this asterisk or wildcard searching option. While Casemaker does have a function pretty similar to this, FastCase takes this to the next step. So you have this opportunity to do a wildcard searching, giving you cases that contain variations of the root word, but also they provide this question mark option, giving you cases that contain um, any variation in spelling, perhaps. Um, the example that's provided on screen is spelling for the word marijuana. Now, not everybody types that correctly the first time through, and that's a good way to uh, get around that issue. So these are your basic search operators that you can find and use for FastCase. Again, those are located under this question mark icon at the top of the screen. So don't ever feel like you are lost or can't find them. And then what we've got, of course, here in the center of the screen is the search bar. You can see that the search bar has some information typed into it. It says type keyword, natural language, or citation. FastCase provides you with the opportunity to type in keyword searches using those Boolean operators, uh, as well as typing in citations or statutes, section numbers, or using a natural language search. But before you do any of your searching, the first thing you'll want to do, of course, is choose your jurisdiction. Directly to the uh, right portion of our search bar, you'll see jurisdiction and sources is listed. If you give that a click, the jurisdiction menu opens. You'll notice that this is pretty similar to the menu in Casemaker. You've got the list of states and territories and the opportunity to click the checkboxes next to them to select those jurisdictions, as well as the federal materials that are available. Then over on the right portion of your screen, you have the opportunity to choose your data type. Casemaker commonly referred to this as compilations. So if you're interested in doing a search in say Ohio, and you only wanted to look for cases, you could make those selections here. Then just click Save and Continue. 
the search bar is going to provide you with what it is you're looking for directly under it. In this instance, I'm searching for all primary and secondary materials, because those are the selections I've made. Directly below the search bar, you'll also see the current sources menu. There's an X provided that you can click on to clear all of your searching. So if at any time you're conducting searches and the results that you're getting just aren't working out for you, try clearing all of your sources first and starting over. It gives you sort of a blank slate. Something else I'd like to point out is the save source option. So if you've chosen a jurisdiction that you very commonly use, you can save your source by clicking this star icon. That way you can readily access it without having to make all of those clicks the next time you log in. You also have the opportunity to review those saved searches and scopes and to edit the sources you have currently selected. Erin, do you want to cover setting default sources for them? Absolutely. So let's go ahead and pick a source. For this one, let's just use the example that Sam mentioned a moment ago. So I'm going to select Ohio here on the left, and I'm going to select cases here on the right. Once I've made those selections, just as she mentioned, we'll click on save and continue, and we'll see that underneath the search box, it'll flip to save to Ohio cases. Now, once it's flipped over there, over here on the left where it says saved sources, you would click on that star icon and then you'll get an option to set that as your default. So if you click on that every time you log in, it'll have that jurisdiction that you just selected as your default, as what you see automatically. So it's really simple to set that and you can reset that anytime you'd like. Now, just quickly mentioning about the search as a moment as we were just speaking, it's super easy to run a search in Fastcase. Now, does not matter what type of search you're going to be running. If you're going to be running a citation lookup, if you're going to be running those keyword searches we mentioned where you saw those connectors up here at the top of the page, or in Fastcase, you can run what's known as a natural language search. Sam, do you want to explain natural language? Sure thing. So natural language searching is probably what you're used to doing in a search operator, or excuse me, a search platform such as Google. Um, basically, you're typing in the topic that you're looking for, not necessarily just the words that you want found in the document, but the topic generally. An example of a natural language search might be if you were looking for um, examples of custody arrangements uh, after or during a divorce agreement or settlement. You could certainly type in some natural language statements that would be made around that in order to bring up that document. Erin, what would be a good example of that? Absolutely. So um, let's try, for example, anything that you can enter as a statement or anything that you can enter as a question. So what are the factors in child custody? It's a question and you can literally enter it as if you're speaking to another person. When you run the search, you'll get relevant results regarding that particular topic. So this makes searching a little bit easier because you don't have to think as much about the search phrase. You can literally just ask the question that you might have. One caveat though, it's always going to be a fairly broad search. So you might get some tangential responses. If you phrase your search as a Boolean one with those keywords or connectors, that will always be a more precise search but a little bit more work to set it up in the first place. Now, one other thing I wanna mention about the search box before we go on to the results page, and that's a feature that you might've seen peeking in as I just did my example here. Fastcase has a tool that we call Type Ahead, and Type Ahead is a form of predictive typing. What the system does is as you begin typing, whether you have a citation or party names or any specific information about the case, the system will look to what you've typed so far and make suggestions based off of that. So in the example we have right here, I've entered part of a citation and the system is making suggestions for me as to cases that begin or whose citation begins with what I've typed so far. So literally, if you have a pin site or if you have an incomplete citation, you can still find the document you're looking for and just click on it to go directly to that particular document. So super easy to go to a specific document, even if you do not have the full citation. And this tool works with any type of information that you enter into the system. So for example, if you only know the party names. 
I was typing in Marbury as in Marbury versus Madison. And as you can see, by the time I hit that B in Marbury, the system already knows what I have in mind and is already suggesting it. And I can therefore just click on it and go directly to that document. Super easy, super fast. Now, regardless of which one I'm doing, I can go ahead and enter whatever search phrase I have in mind. For this one, let's just do Miranda warning. Once I've entered my search phrase, I'm actually ready to run my search. And I can do that by hitting enter or by clicking on the orange search button. When I go to the results page, at the top of the screen, I just wanna point out that you'll be able to see your search phrase right there. So you do not necessarily have to go back and forth about, you know, this is the search page, this is my results page. You can always modify or adjust your search right here at the top of the page. So if you need to add a term to your search or if you have a typo in it, like I frequently do, you can, you can fix it right there. Such a great feature. <laughs> when you're looking at your results, one of the first things that you may notice is how they're sorted. In Fastcase, you can find the sort by option in the upper right portion of the results page. So you can see it says sort by and currently shown is relevance, but you can change that to also sort by date, number of times cited, and alphabetically. Fastcase provides what we call an infinite scroll results page. That means that you don't have to toggle back and forth between pages in order to view the various numbers of results. In this instance, there's uh, over 16,000. While we certainly don't wanna try to get to the bottom, we can just scroll right through and it'll just keep going. You'll notice that my scroll bar over on the far right is going down, but it never makes it to the bottom. In fact, it recalibrates and changes its position based on where we actually are in the list of results that have currently loaded. Um, and it's done fairly instantly. You can see that that didn't take any time at all to load those additional results. Wonderfully done. Over on the left on our results page, you see the current sources you have selected. In this instance, our search was done under primary and secondary all, and then the available sources. So you could continue to filter this by jurisdiction and source. Under the primary and secondary sources, we have everything checked because we didn't choose a specific type of data. We didn't say only cases or only statutes. In fact, we can see that there's a multitude of different documents right in our first six results. But if you wanted to make a more specific selection, such as only searching the statutes, you can check that corresponding box. You can also collapse the primary and secondary sources menu. And you'll notice that you have the opportunity to review briefs, pleadings, motions, and orders. Erin, do you want to point out what that means? Absolutely. So as we mentioned earlier, Docket Alarm, our sister product, is partially integrated with Fastcase. So that means that you can search that Docket Alarm content um, just simply by using the fast case search content that you'll be already familiar with. So if you choose to add that access to briefs, motions, pleadings, and other court documents, you can still search that content without having to switch platforms. So if I clicked on briefs and motions right here, I'd get briefs and motions related to Miranda warning issues. So super easy, super fast to get access to that docket content. That's so great, thanks Erin. Just below the briefs, pleadings, and motions and orders option, you'll notice the date range. If you open that up, Fastcase gives you the opportunity to view your results from just the past 20 years, the past 10 years, the past year, or you can enter a specific date range. Just type that in as a specific year or an actual date, provide a closing uh, date as well, and click the check button. Below this, we also have suggested terms. The suggested terms are a really interesting feature. Erin, could you explain that for us? Absolutely. This tool is especially good if you're searching in an area of law that you're not terribly familiar with, or if you're a bit of a novice to legal research. But what this tool does is it shows you terms of art and common legal phrases that are currently appearing in your results. So let's say that you've searched in an area of law you're not terribly familiar with. You might have enough knowledge to know the basic terms to search, but not be remembering the more specific or focused terms that you could use to focus your search. If you go over here to where you see suggested terms, you can see this list of terms of art and go, oh yes, 
not only am I searching a Miranda warning issue, but I'm searching a Miranda warning issue in the context of a motion to suppress. Great. You don't have to type a single thing. Just click on that plus sign next to motion to suppress and your search phrase at the top of the page will update to show your original search phrase Miranda warning and your additional search phrase motion to suppress. Your results will also automatically filter and update to show only documents that refer to both phrases. Similarly, you can use the suggested terms list to focus your search by excluding terms. So if you see a phrase in the list that you did not want to see, say for example, due process, you can click on the minus sign next to that term and use that to exclude those terms from your results list. So you can go from a super broad list 16,000 of them up here, you can literally exclude, say, 5,000 of them with one click of your mouse. So super easy, super quick to get very focused results without having to type a single thing. All right, so let's go ahead now that we've talked about the results page a little bit and talk about the documents themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a case. And all you have to do in order to open a document is simply click on its name. Now we're on the document view, and you might have noticed as we've been doing this tour that you'll see little pop-ups like this one. These are search tips and guidance for the FastCase system, and they show you important information about how to search the system. You can read the full tour or just click on the X to close that particular pop-up. <laughs> all right, now we're on the results page, or excuse me, we're on the document page. And on the left-hand side of the page, you'll still see your results list. So again, you don't have to go back and forth between the results list and the document view. You can just simply click on the next document you're interested in to go directly to that document. Over here on the right-hand side of the screen, we have the document itself. And uh, just a couple of things to point out about the document itself. Up here at the top of the page, if this particular document, the text is too small, or it's hard to read for whatever reason, you can adjust this over here. So you can make the text bigger, smaller, adjust how it's oriented on the page. All of that's available right here on the left. This area up here is the toolbar for this particular case, and we'll be going over each of these tools in a moment. But if the toolbar is in the way for whatever reason, you can also hide or unhide that toolbar so that you can view it as necessary. Finally, if you would prefer to see your document full screen, instead of seeing this list of results on the left, just click on the full screen button right here and your document will be full screen. Thanks so much for that, Erin. I really love the way that you're able to just hide those toolbars and only get to exactly what you need in FastCase. Speaking of things that you need in FastCase, there's going to come a time when you would actually like to share the content that you found. And you can do that in a number of ways. Um, the first option that I want to point out to you is our download icon. So let's say you've located this particular opinion and it's something that you'd like to keep for your records. You would like to be able to access it later without having to get online. You can simply click this download document icon and it'll provide you with the opportunity to download that in either PDF or a doc format, so uh, Microsoft Word. You can also choose if you'd like to use dual column formatting or uncheck that box to receive that in single column. And you can highlight the terms that you conducted a search for. So if we check this box when we print this particular opinion, all of the occurrences of Miranda warning will be highlighted in my printed copy. That really makes leafing through those pages a little simpler. Another option that you have in order to share this particular content is to click on the share document icon. When you click on this icon, you have the opportunity to add the document to your export queue. FastCase provides you with an export queue, meaning that instead of printing it or downloading it right away, you can add it to a list or a queue. And later, when you have the time or the desire, you can print off everything that you've added to that list at one time. Using the Share Document tool, you can also email the document to yourself or anybody else. Simply type that email address in here and click send. Lastly, you have the opportunity to include a publicly available link for the document that you can share to anybody. 
This means you could copy this public link and place it in your brief and send it to the court or send it to another attorney. Uh, perhaps you're a paralegal who's doing work for an attorney. You could certainly send a public link that way. Maybe you're the type of person who likes to discuss law on social media. You can provide a public link in that platform as well to discuss the law at hand. Anybody who then accesses the document through your public link gets full access to the entire document, not just a one page brief overview or small snippet, they get full actual access to the document itself, just without the great research tools. Excellent. And don't forget that you can also print directly from FastCase. So we've talked about downloading the documents either one at a time or as a batch, but you can also print directly from FastCase to your printer. The easiest way to do so is to use Control P on your keyboard, or if you're using a Mac, that's going to be Command P, or you can right click and use the print function from your particular browser. Regardless, when you do that, it will print directly to your printer so you don't have to do that in between, download it, and then click on print option. Now, one caveat, it will print with the default settings on your printer. So if your default settings for your printer are set to double-sided, it will print double-sided. If they're <laughs> set for a really itty-bitty font, it will print with a really itty-bitty font. <laughs> always a good thing to point out. I can't tell you the number of times I've been frustrated by something similar and not understand why. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have our first question from our audience, which I want to make sure we get to. And that question was, will OSBA members be charged extra for fast case once Casemaker goes away? That's a great question. And the answer is no, not at all. Fast case is going to be incorporated with your bar membership benefits. Excellent. And we have two more questions, but they'll make more sense in just a minute. So we'll pause on those too. Sounds good. All right. Just a couple of things left to show you on this case page. And the first one I want to mention is, well, how do you save a case for later? You're not ready to read it now. You'll be ready when you go home for the evening. We get it. It's super easy to bookmark a document in fast case. So over here on the right, just underneath the menus we were talking about, is this icon that looks like a bookmark ribbon. When you click on it, that bookmarks that case for later so that you can view it anytime you'd like to. And I can already hear the next question, which is, well, how do I access those bookmarks? Well, I'm so glad that everybody asked. Up here at the top of the page, just to the left of the question mark icon we mentioned earlier, you'll see an icon labeled My Library. It kind of looks like a clock with an arrow wrapped around it we are getting ready to update that one icon. So you might see it as a folder in the future by popular demand. <laughs> but once you click on that icon, it'll show you the history of bookmarks and alerts that you've set in the FastCase system. So your search history will show you all of the searches that you've ever run in FastCase going back 18 months or 10,000 searches, whichever is larger. It will show you the exact phrase you used as well as the jurisdiction you ran it in. The document history will show you every document you've viewed in FastCase. So you can just literally click on the name of that document and go back to it anytime. And again, this goes back 10,000 searches or 18 months. The third tab is your bookmarks tab. And as you can see, there's my Brecht versus Abrahamson case right here. So super easy to bookmark and then to go just click and go back to that document anytime. And those bookmarks, search history, and document history that we've mentioned so far, that is tied to your individual profile. So you're the only person who can access them, and you can access them no matter which computer you log in from. So super convenient and confidential. You can also save searches. So anytime you run a search in FastCase, in the search bar, you'll see a tiny drop-down arrow. I'm going to close this pop-up so you can see it right now. This is the arrow I'm referring to. And when you click on that, you'll have an option to save a search for later. So if this is a search you run all the time, you can save it in that My Library folder and be able to rerun it anytime you'd like. And the final option you'll see is Add as Alert. These case law alerts can be added to any search that you run in FastCase. So if you run a search on an area of law you want to stay up to date on, set an alert on it, and then you'll be notified via email anytime there's new case law that meets that search. 
So it's super easy to stay up to date on a whole bunch of topics. And again, this is included in your fast case access. There's no incremental charges. So you can set as many of them as you'd like. That's great, Erin. Thank you for pointing those out. Something that I want to point out that I found particularly interesting as a previous CaseMaker user was under this My Library content. Um, so when you're accessing the document history, you'll notice that there are some colored icons and sometimes uncolored icons to the left of each item in your history, as well as your bookmarks. Those icons will allow you to add a particular document from your history to your bookmarks or in both the instance of history and bookmarks, an automatic link to remove this from your exports. Um, so this document is currently in my export queue. You may recall that I added it. If I change my mind and I don't want to print it anymore, I can just click it again. And you'll notice that it's not orange anymore. We can see this other document that we have accessed. We can simply add that to our exports with just one click. This means that I can look at my history and recall that I had located a statute earlier today and I just remembered I forgot to print it off. Not a problem. I can pull it up in my document history and just click this button. Then later when I'm ready, whether it's been added through the My Library or by clicking the uh, export queue icons from Share, anytime I'm ready, I can click the export queue icon, which is this cloud icon at the top of our screen. When you click on this, you'll see your batch of exports under your current queue. So these are the two documents that are currently in my export queue. And I can then click the export icon to go ahead and create a name for that batch. I can choose the document type I'd like, whether or not I want to use single or dual column. And then if I'd like these downloaded as individual files or into a zip archive. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and answer the question that we get most often, which is, can you shepherdize in FastCase? <laughs> well, let me do the standard disclaimer, which is Shepherds is the intellectual property of a different company. And just tell you that yes, FastCase has a citator. That's gonna be over here on the left-hand side of the screen, the icon that looks like a little flag. That flag will be red if the case has a negative interpretation, and black and white if there's no negative interpretation. When you click on that icon, it opens the full authority check report on the left side of the screen. And at the very top of it, you'll see a little downward pointing icon. This is the downloads button, so you can download this report anytime you'd like, separate from the case. Underneath the name of the case, you'll see your filters option. So if you only want to see uh, cases citing to this case from a particular jurisdiction, say the Second Circuit or Florida or Idaho, you can do so right here and just click on it to filter. Over here on the right, you have an option for sorting this report. It defaults to the most recent citation to this case, but you can click on it and change it to the most cited, which pulls those seminal cases to the top of the report. Now, the next thing that you'll see in the report is any negative treatment of this particular case. This particular case has been abrogated in part, so it would not be my first choice of case to cite to if I have any options. So again, super easy to see the negative treatment. It will always be bolded, and you'll be able to click on that case to view that full uh, review of that case. Then at the bottom of the report, you'll see this gray bar that's labeled citations. If you click on it, it'll show you a full list of all cases citing to your case. So again, you can see how the courts have treated that case in the later case law. Now, just a quick note about your access to FastCase. Your access to FastCase is going to be unlimited, which means that you can stay logged in as long as you'd like. You can run as many searches as you'd like. You can download as much as you'd like. You can print as much as you'd like. I'm not kidding, I actually helped someone print the entire US code once. I still to this day have no idea why he wanted the whole thing, but you can do that if you want. And you can uh, check on the status of your case as many times as you'd like. There are absolutely no incremental charges in FastCase.
Thanks so much, Erin, for explaining that. It's always a good idea to find out exactly what's available to you. And I think it's always great to hear it's unlimited. <laughs> uh, something else that's unlimited is your customer support. So we know that you're getting used to FastCase. It's brand new to you, and you may have found that you had unlimited support through CaseMaker as well. You'll still have that with FastCase. At any time, you can contact our customer support department by a multitude of means, and we are happy to assist you, whether that means helping you navigate the website or helping you come up with searches, or maybe you need to consult with Erin, who is our senior librarian, excuse me, senior legal librarian. Uh, we would be able to provide you with a multitude of types of assistance during our regular business hours. Excellent. Well, let's not hold them in waiting. We have a couple of questions regarding browsing, and I think that's our next topic. It sure is. Let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to browse through FastCase. When you're in your results page or looking at a particular document, you'll see this blue browse button at the top of your screen. You can click on this from anywhere in the library. It's always going to be here. You can also browse from the home page. So I'll show you that first. Uh, we're going to go back to the home page just by clicking the FastCase logo here in the upper left corner. On the home page, you'll notice the large blue Browse Libraries button now in the center of the screen. Regardless of where that blue Browse button is, give it a click and you'll be taken to your library. Now, FastCase defaults to showing you your particular state library. So if you've logged in through the Ohio Bar Association, you'll see Ohio and federal. If you've logged in through another bar association, you would see that particular state and federal. Um, if you're an individual subscriber, same thing but you can switch your jurisdiction at any time. There's always going to be an instance where you may need to access information from a different jurisdiction, and you do have access to that in FastCase. Simply click here, and you can see there's a bar that says change jurisdiction by typing. If you click into it, you can type the jurisdiction you'd like to navigate to, or you can scroll through the provided listing. So you can see we can just scroll through this list and access any of this content and jurisdiction. When we're looking at the browse menu, the page is separated into two sections. We have primary materials on the left and secondary materials on the right. I'd like to go ahead and primarily focus on the primary materials. Under primary material, you'll notice cases and court materials is our largest sort of grouping over on this portion. This is going to give you browsable access to case law opinions, or rather um, you can search for the documents in those particular areas. You can see those listed here. If you click see more, you'll get the full listing and you can collapse that at any time. Perhaps it's just too much information for you. Not a problem. You can collapse anything that's sort of taking up that visual real estate for you. Court rules are also available. Here we can see the full listing of the federally relevant court rules as well as Ohio rules because we're currently in Ohio. And then we've got legislative materials. This gives you access to constitutions, statutes and legislative codes, acts and session laws. And then below this, you'll notice your administrative materials, administrative opinions, regulations and administrative codes. On the right of the screen, you'll see secondary materials. This is a wonderful place to come and access additional material. You'll notice that the majority of the items in this particular section have little price tag icons located next to them. This indicates that the document is not included with your subscription. All of these secondary materials are available for a purchase, or excuse me, are available for purchase. And there's a price associated with that. If you're interested in accessing any of these, and there is a multitude of items such as treatises and books, uh, law journals and reviews, blog articles, expert witness profiles is something you've, you've noticed over here. Um, if at any point this is something that you're interested in reviewing the pricing on or something that you do want access to, just give it a click. And it's that simple. You can take care of all of it right on the website. But let's go ahead and actually browse through some of this content. Erin, would you mind taking us through the Ohio statutes? Not at all. So again, the easiest way to tell if material is browsable is right next to the name of that particular library, you'll see these three parallel lines. Instantly, if you're interested in when the most recent update date was for that particular content, just hover your mouse over the little eye icon to the left, and it'll show the last date that that particular content was updated. When I click on this Ohio Revised Code, it'll show me the different editions that are available in FastCase. Then, 
once I've clicked on the edition I'm interested in, it'll show me the different titles. Uh, let's go with crimes. Those are always fun. <laughs> and then you can see the different chapters. Uh, homicide. And then you can see the individual subchapters, sections, etc. Incidentally, you might have noticed that next to each of these larger sections, there's a little downward pointing arrow. This is a convenient shortcut if you ever want to get a whole bunch of sections at once. If I click on this downward pointing arrow, it'll give me the entirety of chapter 2903 in one downloadable PDF. So again, super easy to get that entire chapter with just one click. I'm gonna go ahead and pick murder. And as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, the outline is still visible, which makes it super easy to continue looking through that outline and going to different sections if I need to. On the right-hand side of the screen, I'll see the individual section that I've selected. And from here, you'll notice that most of the tools that we've just mentioned are still the same. We can still download, we can still bookmark a particular case, we can still search in this particular document. All of these icons are still the same. The one change is over here on the left. Instead of having a flag icon for our citator, I have a capital letter A. A is for annotations, and if I click on that, it'll show me a full list of all cases citing to this particular section. So here's 500 of them, including one from Friday. Oh dear. Anyway, <clears throat> so again, super easy to be able to see all of the cases citing to that statute section and interpreting it. Now, since I mentioned this one was updated on Friday, let's talk a little bit about how frequently content in FastCase is updated. New cases hit our system within 24 hours of that opinion being released by the court. Within a minute or minute and a half after it hits our system, it's updated on every single report in FastCase. So again, if a statute section was cited to yesterday, you'd know about it today. If a particular case was overturned, say on Thursday, you could know about it on Friday. So super easy, super fast to be able to see what's going on with the court's interpretation. Now for non-case law materials, we update those on the same schedule as the issuing body. So if the legislature updates quarterly, so do we. If they update bi-weekly, so do we. You get the idea. So super up to date, super quick to be able to access all of the content that you need in FastCase. I'm just going to go ahead and take a moment and just double check with our questions. Uh, one of the questions was, does FastCase have full state administrative codes or regulations? Yes, we have them for all 50 states, and they are included in your access to FastCase. Again, your access to FastCase will automatically be for primary materials, such as cases, statutes, regulations, court rules, things like that. And the secondary content is an optional upgrade, as Sam just mentioned. All right, I think that gets the questions that we had. So um, that's the basics of how you use the browse mode. And this is available, as you saw from that library, for any library that has that little three parallel line symbol next to it. Thanks so much for that, Erin. That was really helpful. And I do really like knowing that this little eye icon lets us know how up to date something is when we're viewing it. Such a great tool. Yeah. Something else that we would like to point out as far as great tools go is setting up your settings. Over here in the upper right corner of the screen, you'll notice this orange circle. This will typically have your initials in it. If you click on the orange circle, you'll be able to click on the settings option. Once you've clicked into settings, you'll notice that you're placed in advanced settings. Advanced settings gives you the opportunity to check out and make changes to a multitude of things, including this wonderful document properties and document usage sliding bar. Erin, would you mind telling us what these are about? Absolutely. So let's start with the scope settings at the top of the page. When you go to the results page, you can control some of what's going on with those results. So for example, if you set your jurisdiction to statutes, by default, FastCase will show you the most recent edition of those statutes. So the most recent code, the most recent statute, you get the idea. However, sometimes you're doing research that might include historic events. Say your client was arrested in 2012. 
well, the version of the statutes that they were charged under may not be the same as the current version of the statute. So to fix that problem, you can toggle so that you include those historic results as a part of your results. Similarly, if you don't want to see treatises that might be on the same subject as what you're searching, you can choose to exclude that type of content, and it makes it super easy to make sure that the type of results you're getting are the type you're interested in. The second half of these settings is a new tool that's a little unique to FastCase. We are literally the only search engine that makes this visible to you, the researcher. And this has to do with relevance. So by default, when you sort your results, they're going to be in relevance order. Most relevant document at the top, least relevant one pushed to the bottom. Though, as we pointed out, you can change that sort order anytime you want. Now, the reason why relevance is a bit of a question is the question that always comes up, how does FastCase or any search engine determine a particular document to be more relevant than another? Well, the answer is that every search engine has their own unique factors that they take into account when determining relevance. And the eight factors that you see on the screen right now are the factors for FastCase. We're the only uh, research platform that makes that visible, but not only is it visible, we actually allow you to adjust this a little bit to your preferences as a researcher. So let's say that you've decided that, oh, I don't care how old that case is, I just care that it has the information I need in it. Great, you can reduce that factor to zero and it will not have any impact on how your results are sorted. Let's say that you want, or you really like it when those Supreme Court cases end up at the top of the results list. Great. You can increase that factor and that will have a greater impact on how your results are sorted. There's about a million possible different combinations from these sliders, so you can literally tweak this to your preferences as a researcher. Now I will say personally that the default is pretty darn good, but again you can adjust this so that the results are always in the order that you would prefer. What a great resource. Thanks, Erin. You're quite welcome. Well, I think we have covered most of what we wanted to cover for today, but we are going to double check and see if we have any questions. While we're checking for any questions, Sam, do you wanna tell them a little bit about how they reach out? Absolutely. So I mentioned earlier that you have unlimited access to customer support, and it's absolutely true. The only sort of requirement there is that you do contact us during our regular business hours. There's a couple of ways that you can reach us. Of course, you can click on the question mark icon at the top of your screen, and that gives you the opportunity for more support. When you click on more support, that'll give you the option to call us on the phone or to contact us by email. But something that we really like about FastCase's layout is you'll notice there's a chat button at the bottom of every page that you're on, whether you're looking at a case or a statute, conducting a search and looking at results, or here on the browse page. This chat icon remains at the bottom right corner of your screen regardless. You can chat with our customer service representatives just by clicking that icon. It'll ask you for basic information so we know how to address you and get in touch with you if there's any additional follow-up that's needed. This information is just so that we can actually reach out to you um, if needed. So say, for example, you sent this chat message while we were not in the office, then we would be able to capture that email so that we could get back with you when we are. You can provide a phone number if you'd like as well. Once you fill out this information, you'll click Start Chatting, and you'll be able to speak with our representatives right here in this little portion of the screen. What's really excellent about that and what we found incredibly helpful is especially if you're having trouble with research. If you happen to um, need a search suggestion, for example, instead of being on the phone with us and wondering if we've just told you to type in, um, you know, an E or a three, <laughs> whatever would make more sense, of course. But regardless of what letter we've actually said, you may have heard or interpreted something entirely different. This cuts that issue out and you can simply copy and paste any search suggestions we may have. Another benefit of using the chat feature is that all of the links you see at the top of your screen where you see the actual web address, the fc7.fastcase.com, et cetera, 
If you're trying to speak with a representative and you're like, I don't know what's going on on this screen, the representative may actually ask you, can you give me the link to the screen that you're on? Because we'll be able to see what it is that you're looking at and help you through it. Vice uh, versa too, if we get a really great set of results and we want you to see exactly the same set, we can send you a link to that results page and you'll see exactly the same set of results. Which has been so beneficial. Something I do want to point out is what our regular business hours actually are. Fast case customer support is available from 8 a.m. to 8, or is it 9, Erin? Fast case is 9 p.m. Fast case is 9 p.m. So you get an extra hour of support. How great is that? So fast mm -hmm. case's hours are 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. We are Eastern based, so that's Eastern time um, as far as the time zone goes. And that is Monday through Friday, barring federal holidays. Excellent. Well, it looks like we don't have any questions for today, but we really encourage you, if you have questions in the future, to reach out to us via any of the methods that Sam just mentioned. It has really been a pleasure speaking to you about how the FastCase system works. There's a couple more tools and features that we didn't mention today. They're a bit of an advanced feature. So if you have questions about those too, just let us know. And we welcome any questions and any thoughts that you might have as we go forward with this transition. We hope that everybody has a wonderful afternoon. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope you enjoy your day.